Am I right in thinking that there's actually a horror movie based around every holiday of the calendar year now? We might have to start doing like standout days for horror movies. How about World Book Day? Let's base a slasher movie around that next. There's an idea. Hello there everybody and welcome back to Movie Squirm. Today I'm going to be reviewing the 2023 film Thanksgiving and this is directed by Eli Roth and stars Nell Velahi. This tells the story of a killer taking people out one by one in the town of Plymouth, Massachusetts after a Black Friday event the year before goes horribly wrong. Let's see. Now this was in fact a fake trailer that surfaced in the motion picture brought to us by Quentin Tarantino and Robert De Rodriguez of Grindhouse. If you remember that movie, had some fake trailers in the middle and Eli Roth made one of them trailers and it was in fact this. And it has turned into a fully fledged motion picture now these many years later. And Eli Roth is a director who I've been watching a lot of his films this week. I'd seen a few of them like Hostel and Hostel 2 before, but I decided to catch up on his filmography. And you know what? He's not the best director, but he always makes fun movies and thanksgiving was another one that takes place around a holiday and i'm always up for a holiday themed horror movie especially if it's a slasher film so i gotta say i was quite looking forward to this one so what did i think of thanksgiving let's find out now i know thanksgiving isn't something we really celebrate here in the uk unless you've got us origins i suppose but I'm fully aware of what it's all about. After seeing many movies and TV shows you know, celebrate Thanksgiving, even if it's just in episodes here and there, or movies like Plane Trains and Automobiles, I'm fully aware of what Thanksgiving means to the US and a few other countries like Canada and stuff. And I know what surrounds it. Everyone gets together for turkey dinner and stuff like that. But this movie seemed to capture everything about that holiday and incorporate it right into the story. I mean, it just feels like it takes place around that time. We also have the movie set in the town of Plymouth, Massachusetts, which I believe Thanksgiving was originated from and where it all came together. We also have this big grueling opening scene, which was awesome, which all involves a Black Friday event where characters are just rushing into the store and causing mayhem. And that usually takes place just after Thanksgiving on the midnight end of thanksgiving if you like but it's all leading up to it so it does actually take place on the holiday and we also have lots of kills going in here which just saw so many thanksgiving themed moments in them which was just one of the best things about the movie and we've got electric carbon knives stuck into people here there is a character who is thrown against the inside of a freezer door where turkeys are being stored and she's kind of stuck there waiting for the killer to come and smash her up with an axe and we also have corn on the cob holders <laughs> stuck into people's ears here i mean <laughs> the killer even works towards this goal towards the end of the movie that is totally thanksgiving themed and this all sounds absolutely ridiculous and you know why that's because it is and i absolutely loved it the longer this goes the more twisted it gets the weapon he's using is straight off a thanksgiving table now i quickly realized watching this film that it was just cheesy as hell there are so many comedic moments thrown in here and i'm not usually a fan of comedy in my horror films at all unless it's done well but i'm glad to say that it was here because i was laughing my ass off in certain moments but in the next moment i might be like oh what the fuck and then there's just blood splattered everywhere so much gore it's a really fine balancing act that works and it just allows all the cheesiness to be sprinkled in between that I mean, a couple of examples of this, I don't want to give too much away, but there is one moment where a character is killed and they are eating sweet corn. <laughs> you just see the sweet corn drop, roll on the floor towards the killer and he just puts his foot on it to stop it. And <laughs> there's other moments where the killer's walking towards these two characters and he's just scraping his axe along slowly as he walks towards murdering them. <laughs> I mean, you're going to have a lot of stuff like that in Thanksgiving. So be prepared going into this that you can't take it too seriously. And I felt like this just paid homage to all of them great 80s slashes that we got back in the day. 
If this film wasn't filmed in 4K and looking absolutely pristine like a lot of movies do today, it will be absolutely at home in that wonderful era we got there. A lot of the kills were reminding me of Friday the 13th here and there, just over the top silliness. And I know this isn't going to be for everyone, but there is a huge audience out there, especially slasher fans who like this type of shit, and I am definitely one of them. Slasher movies are my jam, and I just felt right at home with Thanksgiving. I mean, it was just delivering everything I wanted from the subgenre. There's even great lines of dialogue thrown in here, like these one-liners. The killer at one point says, there will be no leftovers. <laughs> I mean, I was like, yes, that's what I want. This movie knows exactly what it is, and I respected it so much for that. Now, this killer known as John Carver, that is not a spoiler, by the way. This killer is just referred to throughout the movie and the town as the John Carver killer was awesome. I loved the design of this killer. I loved how this killer enhanced themselves throughout the third act as well. You think you're just getting this one type deal, but later on, it's sort of becomes even more interesting i don't want to give too much away there but i just I, I i just loved how many tricks was up this killer's sleeve as well the movie is so creative it's so gory this killer is not afraid to get their hands red with blood i mean the blood is just spattered across the screen here and i really really loved the design of this killer as well i really hope this isn't the last we see of the john carver killer because we only really have art the clown moving forward here in the slasher genre so i think john carver and art the clown should take us into the new slasher generation now one thing that usually suffers in slasher movies is the group of characters the killer is coming after there are exceptions of course like scream we all love gale weathers and dewey and stuff like that but most of the time, they are just throw away. They're there to be killed. However, I quite liked this group of characters in this movie. I mean, they're not the most likable people within the school. They're not on the low end of the popularity scale. They're not nerds or anything like that. They are quite popular. Like, they're all very sporty. And, you know, they've got hot chicks who do cheerleading. And, you know, quite rich or whatever. So... I was kind of surprised at that because it usually wants you to root for the underdog, like the nerd or someone who's not very popular at school, to get a character arc going. And I kind of, I thought it was nice to see, you know, a different shape take on things with the characters there. So they all have personalities and stuff, and they feel like a group of friends that would harangue around together. You haven't got a jock a geek, a goth all thrown in together that takes you out the movie and doesn't make it believable, they actually feel like they would be friends in real life as well. So for me, this group of characters were fine. And Nell Valak was a cool <laughs> leading protagonist. I don't think she's going to go down in scream, cre scream queen territory or anything like that. Maybe if we get a few sequels, who knows? But I thought she was fine as the leading protagonist here, and you did get behind her. Now, there was a few moments that did take me out the movie involving John Carver as the killer being three or four steps ahead of everyone else. One moment where this cheerleader and this gym teacher guy sort of went somewhere in the school and there's like a double killing going on. And I just thought, how oh, did the killer know they were going to be there? I'm, I'm not quite sure. There's other moments where a body is found at a very, very high location within the town. I was thinking, eh, how did... How did the killer get the body there? I'm not quite sure how the killer managed that. So there's just things like that where you've got to sort of take yourself out of it for a moment. Unfortunately, there are a couple of horror tropes towards the end of the movie as well. The usual ones you see, like characters being injured to slow themselves down or not making great decisions when it's right there in front of you on the screen. You're just scratching your head going, why didn't you do this? Again, a lot of horror movies suffer from this, but I really wish they would stop this. It's just so obvious now. It comes a common theme. I mean, filmmakers should be a little bit smarter than that these days. However, Eli Roth has delivered an exceptionally entertaining movie here. Some people like big, massive comic book blockbusters. Some people love indie projects. Some people love the art house style, but me, this is what I live for. This is the this is the type of movies that I grew up with. They're the type of movies I love. And I just felt right at home here. I was loving this movie from start to finish.
I'm just going to go ahead and make this movie now. I'm going to give Thanksgiving an 8 out of 10. This is definitely one of Eli Roth's better films that he has made out of the 8 movies he's had. I would definitely put this towards the top of the rank in there. And it's definitely one of the most fun times I've had in the cinema all year. Okay, guys, at the end of these reviews, I always like to leave a little fun fact. Now, a fun fact for Thanksgiving is that the killer's costume is inspired directly by the iconic paintings of John Carver, who is one of the pilgrims of the Mayflower Voyage. The mask they wear is a recreation of Carver's face, and that is why the killer in this film is nicknamed the Carver. Okay, guys, hope you all enjoyed this review. If you want more 2023 horror movie reviews, they will be in the link down below. What did you think of Thanksgiving? Are you a fan of this type of subgenre? Do you like Evil Eli Roth? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much, guys. You all take care, and I'll see you on the next video.